Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about protein transport into mitochondria. We know most of the proteins destined for mitochondria are synthesized in cytosol and then these proteins are transported into mitochondria. And for this transport to occur, the protein contains signal sequences why to get transported in mitochondria like in matrix or inner membrane or intermembrane space. We know the mitochondria is a double membrane organelle and in both of these membranes the protein import channels or pores are installed to facilitate the protein transport and the proteins which drive the transport into mitochondria are called translocons. For both of these membranes that's for outer membrane and inner membrane there are different translocons present. First of all we see there is a TOM complex that's translocon of outer membrane. Then we have TIM complex which is the translocon of inner membrane. Both of these protein channels drive the protein import. When you look at the TOM complexes, the most important outer membrane translocon is TOM40. And there are other accessory outer translocons like TOM2022 and TOM70. But TOM40 is the main channel pore. And for inner membrane translocons, we see there are TIM2317, TIM44, TIM54, TIM22 and TIM910. And it must be noted that all the translocons do not exist in a single pathway but there are different pathways that are used by these translocons to drive their protein import. Like we see TIM54 and TIM22 facilitate transport into inner mitochondrial membrane along with the help of TIM9 and 10. Apart from these complexes, there is another transport molecule which is OXA1. It is a protein transport channel which facilitates transport from mitochondrial matrix to inner mitochondrial membrane. This OXA1 acts as a mitochondrial inner membrane insertase. It mediates the insertion of both mitochondrial and nuclear encoded proteins from matrix into the inner membrane. Basically we see when the protein molecules contain both the sequences that is the matrix targeting sequence and OXA targeting sequence then at that time the protein molecule is first transported to matrix where then it is taken into inner membrane by the help of OXA1. So this is how the OXA1 insertase mediates the transport from matrix into the inner membrane. Now let's see in detail the pathway for protein transport. First of all we will see the pathway for protein import into mitochondrial matrix. We have a mitochondria with outer membrane having importer receptor on it which will recognize the matrix targeting sequences of protein and also there is an inner mitochondrial membrane barrier for transport. The precursor protein to be transported has got C-terminus end and N-terminus end and the matrix targeting sequences are present on the N-terminus end of protein. To ensure that precursor proteins remains in unfolded state the cytosolic HSC70 molecules bind to the protein and keeps the molecule in unfolded state because it is the unfolded state that will be transported through channel pores into mitochondrial matrix. And also remember that cytosolic HSC70 has different function than that of matrix HSC70 which we will find later on what this matrix HSC70 does. And this process needs energy which is supplied by the hydrolysis of ATP. Then this protein molecule matrix targeting sequence bind to the import receptor on outer membrane like this which then targets this protein molecules into channel pore of TOM40 of outer membrane. Now protein molecule needs to get through the inner membrane and for that the inner membrane has got translocons in the form of TIM2317 and TIM44. The translocating protein that moves through the inner membrane channels and it's by the help of matrix HSC70 which pulls the protein inside and helps in getting the protein into mitochondrial matrix with the energy from ATP molecules. Now the protein is in matrix and here the MPP that's matrix processing protease cleaves the targeting sequence from the rest of protein molecule which then starts folding into its functional form either by chaperonins or autofolding. And finally we get the active protein that is the functional protein in mitochondrial matrix. So this is how the proteins destined for mitochondrial matrix are transported through these channels. In the next part of the video we will be discussing about OXA1 and other pathways for mitochondrial transport. I hope you like the video. If you like it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.